Hi Leo, welcome to your July 2017 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So it's very interesting, Leo. In July, the energy centers around you being in a cocoon of sorts in the 12th house. Kind of like in the womb, waiting to be born. And yes, I mean, you have these planets, all these planets going into your sign at different times. And then the sun goes into your sign on July 22nd, and that is your solar return. A couple, well, no, actually one day later, you have a new moon in your sign. So very, actually it's the first of two new moons in Leo. Of course, the North Node is in Leo. So it really is going to be, I think, your year. And I'm talking about the year starting now. Let's just talk about the rest of this year and going into next year. Whatever has happened in the past, leave it in the past. Because you have a lot to embrace that is good. And July is a time for you to be on center stage. So Venus goes into your 11th house in the sign of Gemini on the 4th of July. It had been in your 10th house of career and Venus in the 10th can bring money and a lot of admiration from people towards you in terms of your career. So your superiors, uh, people that know of your work, they can be attracted to you, find you inexplicably <laughs> inexplicably attractive in some way. And that magnetism can attract money and success and happiness to you. That's what Venus is all about, about harmony and luxury and things like that beauty so in the 11th house venus becomes a harmonizer of your social network so your friendships um, your group associations and that can mean that you're getting along better with friends you're finding love some of you among your social circles or the groups that you belong to. The other thing that Venus can do here is give you the money to make your dreams come true. This is the luckiest house and to have Venus travel through here as she's going to be doing and then um, that well she will be there until the 31st. And then she goes into the 12th house, which is the most hidden house. And it's like hibernation time. But Venus in the 12th house can also bring clandestine relationships, past life relationships, and things of that nature. But I'll talk about that more in August when the transit is really full-blown. Mercury goes into your sign the very next day on the 5th. And so while Mercury is in the 12th house for the first five days, you may be preoccupied with something that you can't put your finger on. You may have, you may have vague anxieties. Uh, the 12th house can be those things which we keep buried deep down within us and um, and you also have Mars in this sector until the 20th and Mars can feel like a caged animal in the 12th house because Mars is very physically active and the 12th house is very inward uh, seeking so between Mercury and Mars in the 12th and of course Mercury will only be there for um, less than a week in July, but um, because of both of these, but if you're listening in June, of course, 
you might uh, take heed of this. Meditation, Hatha Yoga, anything, or Tai Chi, Jigong, or whatever, how you pronounce that. Anything that gets you to move, but also is something that we consider to be a spiritual exercise that, you know, unblocks the chakras or whatever those asanas are designed to do. So on the 22nd, as I said, the sun goes into, well, let me just say this because I'm talking so much about the 12th. Let me tell you what Mercury and Mars are going to be in your first house. With Mercury in your first house, you become your own PR agent. And you really start to also think about how you project yourself to other people, your image and things like that. And that becomes important for you. Um, I should say, too, that on the 25th, Mercury then travels into the second house of earned income. And you become someone who is concerned about your income streams. What money is coming in, what is going out, and how can you make more money? So you become an idea person in that sense. Mars goes into your first house on the 20th, and all of a sudden, you have a lot of physical energy. You may feel like you want to start an exercise program. You just may feel very vibrant and raring to go. And this can even extend to how you present yourself to other people. You may feel a lot more like you want to be around people First and foremost, when you have a lot of plants in the 12th house, you may feel physically tired. You may just feel extra sensitive and even a little bit paranoid sometimes. The sun goes into that first house of the self on the 22nd, and this is your ruler too. So it's not just like any solar return, it's your ruler return, and... There's nothing a Leo person loves more than the sun. I actually knew a Leo person in the last place I lived and found out he was a Leo. And he always talked about how he loves sunbathing. And uh, so that is definitely something, um, a transit to have the sun in your sign is extra special for Leos because that's your ruler. And you may feel like a, a sense of coming home in a, in a way because you have all these planets leaving that 12th house, Mercury and Mars and the sun. And now it's time to move forward completely. And the new moon the next day really caps that off. Zero degrees of Leo. And then in August... You're going to have the second one at a late degree of Leo. I think it's 27 Leo on August 21st. So a full moon in Capricorn on July 9th in the sixth house of health, the workplace. For some people, you may discover something about your health or about a healing uh, maybe you've been trying to put your finger on some of the symptoms that you have had and you gain clarity on that. You are made aware of information. You may be doing some kind of a detox to purify your body. It's also possible that you are dealing with workplace matters. Um, perhaps you learn something about a co-worker or about your job prospects. You know, the sixth house is your physical workplace. Um, by extension, that would be your job. And so for some people, they may decide to quit or they may be laid off. 
or that you might just have an influx of work all of a sudden. The, the new moon in Leo in your sign is right next to the, you, you could call it a conjunction with, um, well, I, I'll just leave it at saying that it is a, well, I, what I was going to say is that it was kind of almost to the same degree as the uh, sun going into Leo in the first place. And so if you want to call that your solar return, your solar return is actually on the day of your birthday. So everyone's is going to be whenever their birthday is in, you know, under the sign of Leo. And um, with the first new moon at zero degrees, it's like the very beginning. And so you have two, you could say you have two portals for new beginnings, Leo. And this is just in your house of self. This is how you carry yourself. Just in general, the direction you're going in life. The second new moon should clarify things. Maybe the first one at zero degrees is still bringing up issues related to home and family because it's on the cusp with cancer. So the second one should kind of make things more clear about your goals, your aspirations. But we also have the North Node in Leo, and I don't have my ephemeris up at this second, or I would look up to see exactly what degree it's going to be in at the time of the new moon. I'm talking about the um, the second one specifically in August, which is a solar eclipse. Because the North Node travels backwards. And so it's going to be at a later degree of Leo. And I'm wondering if it's a conjunction with that new moon. I'm going to pause and see. And uh, the north, the transiting north node is going to be at four, 24 degrees of Leo. So it's going to be four degrees apart from the new moon. And I know that there's not much space allowed between the moon and other planets that form an aspect. So, or entities like the north node. So anything more than two degrees might not be considered a conjunction. However, just the fact that the transiting north node is in the same sign as your sun sign should tell you something about your life for the next 18 months. And really, um, with these new moons, really try to envision your what you want to to manifest with the 11th house activity. What is it that you want out of life and it being for the highest good of all, not just for your self-aggrandizement, but what about something that would also make other people happy and try to envision what your life would look like? I I just can't help but think that Leos are incredibly lucky and blessed in July and August. So I hope you enjoyed this, Leo. If you'd like a private reading, you can click on the link below. It will take you to rainandmoonastrology.com. I am currently offering a sale on my natal chart readings. Take care of yourselves. Bye.